everybody, and welcome to Fort's Comic News, episode 79. I am your only host, Chris. Mike is out of town again, but I have two amazing interviews for you this week. So uh, we will dive into those. Uh, I want to start, we're not going to get into a ton of news, but we did want to talk a little bit about Steve Ditko. Now, Steve Ditko passed away as of this recording last night, and... Uh, we wanted to chat a little bit, or I wanted to chat a little bit about it. Steve Ditko was one of the most important people in comics. He was the co-creator of Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, all these amazing characters. You know, everybody talks about Kirby, and Kirby deserves the praise he gets. Steve Ditko was right there next to him. Uh, Lee and Ditko and Lee and Kirby, these guys created the comics we love at Marvel, and... Kirby and Ditko even went over DC and did some stuff as well. So we need to honor him this week and his life and the amazing work he did. And so this episode is really kind of dedicated to him because I can say without a doubt that the two creators that I talked to today would not be here without uh, Steve Ditko. And that goes for pretty much everybody we have talked to and myself and Mike. The characters he created are what really drive our passion and you know thanks for everything Steve uh, you're dearly missed the the community is n less without you um, so rest easy friend and uh, thanks for everything you gave us now with that we're gonna jump into our first interview I'm gonna start with Troy the the Vesey um, the visas I butcher his name left and right I apologize Troy Troy is the writer of a little book called Mr. Crypt Alterna Comics, and uh, we're going to jump into that, and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back, everybody. I have another special guest for you this week. We have a Troy, I'm going to butcher your last name, sorry, Troy, but the Vivasi? Uh, Vivasis. Vivasis. Welcome to the show, Troy. Hi, thanks for having me. So, Troy, you've had... Quite a few comics out there. I noticed there are a lot of horror-based comics. Um, but my first question really has to be, what's your secret origin? What got you into comics, and what got you into writing comics? Um, well, I, I've always been a big fan of Star Wars, so that, you know, there was plenty of Star Wars comics when I was growing up, so I started reading those, and from there I just was really interested in it and started reading a lot of Batman books when I was a teenager. And uh, I just uh, took a lot of creative writing courses, like in high school, and everything had to do a lot of creative writing assignments. So just from there, I knew I wanted to, to do something with writing. And then I read a book when I was around 19 or so about uh, how white comics written by Dennis O'Neill. So mm -hmm. that's how I knew how to like write the comic scripts and all that the format and like i said earlier it seems like a lot of your work is horror based is there a are you a big horror fan yeah i've, I've always liked like the old classic uh hammer and universal horror movies and uh your prior work that's all kind of inspired by that style of horror yeah uh, for the most part i've i've uh, written in a lot of different genres I've, I've done a little bit of science fiction also mm -hmm. but yeah i've i've been a lot of like uh horror anthologies there seems to be plenty of those nowadays yeah but uh so we're here today really to talk about your book um at Alterna Comics, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Crypt. What's the synopsis there? What, what can my listeners look forward to in that book? Um, so Mr. Crypt follows a, a skeleton who uh, wakes up one day from the grave and he doesn't know who he is. And he walks into a, uh, a village that's nearby and the villagers chase him and uh, think he's evil because he's a skeleton. And then they, they end up uh, he ends up running into a, a clothing store and he takes a, a, a hat and a suit and a fake mustache and he wears that. And 
sometimes it works for him and sometimes it doesn't. And that's where a lot of the misadventures come from. In that book, it, from the art I saw, it seemed like it was a little more comedic based. Is that true? Yeah, it's it's like a, I, I think of it as like an old cartoon, like from the 30s and 40s, that type of thing. That's really cool. And how did you get uh, hooked up with Alterna? Um, well, uh, when I was almost done with the first issue of, of Mr. Crypt, I uh, found Alterna uh, on social media and I saw their uh, website and I just submitted a, a pitch for the book uh, to them and uh, they accepted it. That's really cool. So who's the artist that's involved with this book? Um, Alexander Jovic. Okay. He has a really cool style to him. I like the, yeah. like you describe it as that old style cartoon. It really kind of looks that way too, but a little bit mm -hmm. crisper. Uh, so we got that out. Or how many issues in on that? Uh, well, for the first mini series is uh, three issues. And now, uh, Altona has a anthology series uh, called It Came Out on a Wednesday. And the first issue of that comes out on uh, July 11th. And that will have each issue of that will have a one page uh, short uh, with Mr. Crypt. So that, that anthology, check it out. That's probably going to be a good uh, introduction to that character. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about your past work. I mean, like I said, I saw a lot of the, the horror anthology, but I'm really intrigued. You you said the right words. You said science fiction, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. What science fiction books have you done? Um, well, I did uh, mostly like uh, self-published books. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, one called uh, Backstore and the uh, Iktong Conflict that I did. That was back like five years ago. And I've done a few uh, um, science fiction shorts. Like I have one in a uh, anthology coming out uh, next month uh, called uh, the, the, the uh, anthology that's in is called Fun Adventure Comics. And I think it's issue nine. And I have a science fiction story in that uh, series. So I, I, we don't get a lot of people doing anthology stuff. Curious as a writer, is, I mean, do you enjoy anthologies more, or, or do you enjoy doing your own series more? Like, what's kind of the the flow there? Um, well, they kind of, um, you know, they they each have their own uh, challenges and and benefits, really. And I, the thing about anthologies is that you know. Uh, because they're really not, a, a lot of times you can just write a self-contained story. It doesn't have to continue or anything like that. So in that aspect, that's good. But if you want to do something that's going to keep going, sometimes it's better to just do a, a series then. So, so it, it really depends on the type of story that you're wanting to uh, work on. So anthologies, kind of, they've, they flex that short story itch for you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I always liked writing short stories too. So I, I have worked on a lot of anthologies, and I have a lot of fun with those. And then with the the Mister Crypt uh, anthology uh, story coming out this Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, you said that's just a one pager. Yep. So is that really just a? Uh, I mean, is this anthology book just all the creators coming together and doing kind of an intro to their series? Um, or? Well, so, well, some of them, I think, um, I think there's a few people in the book that are just uh, people who have never been published before. Uh, I think that's what some of them are. And they, like, submitted their stories and were selected. And I think I think all the other stories are more than one page, but mine it's like a it's very much like like a a Sunday newspaper kind of uh, story. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So, and Mr. Crypt, when I first thought of it, I thought of it as a collection of short stories. So, yeah, these one pages, they really work good for, for the character. So if people get into the, the miniseries you did, is that a bunch of short stories or was that one continued story that you did? Um, the, um, each, each issue is, is kind of self-contained, so you can really read each issue separately, but there is some, some references to like issue one and, and issue two and some references to issue two and issue three. So there's some things that connected a little bit, but it's not as strict as like, like a Batman book or something where like you have to read each, each issue. Very cool. So, uh, Mr. Crypt, it came out on Wednesday, all out from Alternative Press Comics. Uh, do they they have a Comicsology page, correct? Yeah, and I think that I don't know if the anthology is going to be on Comicsology or not, uh, but they have a um, a uh, Etsy page also where they sell copies of the books. Well, there you go. Check out alternativecomics.com. It's a uh, easy to use website they've got a storefront there and everything and i'm sure that's what takes you straight to the etsy page yeah and uh pick up mr crypt it's it looks really cool it sounds fun uh and i hope everyone out there enjoys it if my listeners want to keep up with whatever your next project is and you know what Mm -hmm. you have coming up where's the best place to send them um probably to my uh facebook page it's just my my name uh trevor basis on facebook and then i have a i have a website it's uh troyscomics.blogspot.com awesome so everybody check him out there he's uh some cool books to check out and uh thanks for being on the show man i really appreciate taking the time to talk to me uh, thanks for having me wow troy was uh really cool he's done some cool stuff a lot of horror sci-fi mr crip looks like a lot of fun uh, so Troy is the first in kind of our little adventure here into Alterna Press Comics. Alterna Press, uh, we reached out to each other, talked, and we're going to talk to a lot of their creators and do some stuff with them. So we're really excited to work with them and thank them for you know recognizing us and helping us to uh, bring some more amazing creators to you and some comics that otherwise we may or may not have found out about. Um, so check out Troy, you got all the information in the interview, and uh, we're going to jump into another interview. That's right, two interviews again this week. And uh, I got Will Robson, who worked for uh, Marvel. He did the Great Lakes Avengers, which you're going to hear me gush and gush about the Great Lakes Avengers, because I, I love that book so much. Uh, short-lived as it was, it was still amazing. And... Uh, He's also doing a book at Image right now that will be out later this year called Spawn Kills Everybody. We'll talk about that too and how he is just freaking out about working with Todd McFarlane, the fact that Todd McFarlane's inking his work and everything. But I'll stop there, hear it from him. So guys, this is the interview and I'll see you on the other side. So welcome back everybody. Today we have an artist from... You see him do covers for Marvel, IDW, Blue Juice Comics, pretty much everybody. He's also done a personal recent favorite of mine, The Great Lakes Avengers, and is working on some stuff currently. Welcome to the show, Will Robson. How's it going? It's going good. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. England just won today, so we're now in the semifinals of the World Cup, so I'm very, I'm in a good mood. I will, probably would have been in a bad mood if uh, if we didn't get through. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, my country, the U.S. of A., sucks at what well, you call football. Uh, so, not much to go on there for FIFA. Root <laughs> <laughs> well, for England, then. It's coming home, mate. It's coming home. All right, I'll root for it for you and, and Kevin Scott. We had Kevin Scott on the show, so root for my Brit friends. So, uh, yeah, so currently you're working on Spawn Kills Everything. That's correct? Spawn Kills Everyone. It's a, everyone. It's a sequel to... There was a one-shot uh, Spawn Kills Everyone last year, I think, or maybe the year before. And uh, Todd was happy with the sales. So 
we're doing a little mini series of four issues. So uh, Todd's writing it, Todd McFarlane. Uh, I'm drawing it, and yeah, it's just good fun. That's awesome. He seems to be going all in on Spawn again. Seems like he's had a resurgence on that. Well, he's got. I mean, his movies picked up by Blumhouse, which is awesome. I mean, he's a busy guy. I I, I have to hound him down for a script now because his film's kicking off. And I'd be like, hey, don't forget about me drawing this little silly comic in the corner. <laughs> How is it working for a guy that, you know, at one point was known for being the artist? Is it different from working for somebody who's just a writer? Well, you got me on video here. I mean, you could see I'm a massive Todd McFarlane fan. <laughs> My whole studio is full of McFarlane stuff. I mean, when I was a kid, I had... Spider-Man McFarlane bed sheets as well and I, I've always been a huge he's been my favorite artist for the longest time and Greg Capullo as well when he took over Spawn so he's been a huge idol of mine for ages so being, I, I ran when Great Lakes Avengers ended I randomly emailed I figured out Tom McFarlane's email because I was like well Great Lakes Avengers is ending maybe I can do some Spawn I emailed him luckily got a response and, and we're working together so it, it's pretty nuts so he's I don't know, if you're a filmmaker and you get to work with Steven Spielberg or something, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that a lot. It's, you know, Tom McFarlane seems to be a a fulcrum for the modern art community. Because so many people are just like, yeah, he was the guy that got me in the comics. So, uh... So Spawn kills everyone. Yeah. What's the, what's the pitch on that? What oh, What is the book I think- about? Uh, the, the title says it all. Spawn <laughs> kills everyone, but uh, not so much in this one. In this one, he has uh, he has little Spawn babies that he's farted out or pooped out. It's all very tongue in cheek and silly, and he hated them. He, he suddenly had all of these little baby minion spawns. He didn't know what to do with them, but they're the ones that actually go out and kill for him. So he's starting to love them because they're like, you know, oh, we need old dad's love. So the only way we can get it is by killing, you know, Batman and the turtles and stuff like that. But what's been cool with working with Todd is that it's a very open style script. It's Marvel method, so it's a uh, the script is is you know it's not super detailed. But he also said says to me like, like who do you want to draw? And I was like, well, I'm a huge Turtles fan. I'm a huge Batman fan. So he's like, all right, well, well page two, like baby spawns are in the Batcave and they're about to kill Batman and stuff. I'm like, this is great. Like it's awesome to work with a writer that wants to get the best sort of art out of you because I think they know I mean he's a he's an artist himself I think he knows if the artist is enjoying what they're doing then the work becomes a little less work and a little more fun <laughs> that's awesome so I want to move over to a book that I absolutely adored that not a lot of people talked about and that was the Great Lakes Adventures right how how was that book brought about <laughs> Um, I think it was something that the Avengers office was playing with for a while. And I think it was just right place, right time. I don't know the full story of how it happened, but I think the you know the recent success at the time we launched it in 2016. I think the recent success of things like Squirrel Girl uh, and um, uh, what's her name, the cat Patsy. Oh, uh, oh Patsy Walker, something cat. Yes, yeah. I think it is Hellcat. Patsy. Yeah. I think just these sort of comedy books were hitting good sale marks for Marvel, and they thought, well, maybe this is something we can invest in. And I think they just dug out of the trenches the Great Lakes Avengers. And embarrassingly, when I when I got the gig, I didn't I didn't know who the team was at the time. So I sent an email when they when they said, oh, would you like to do Great Lakes Avengers? I was like, oh, I used to live in Vermont. I love the Great Lakes. <laughs> like I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I thought it was going to be a team all about like. Like, you know, uh, people that come from Burlington or something uh, and it was superpowers. But the moment I got to know the gig, I went and I read the Dan Slot run and I thought it was absolutely amazing. I loved, loved what he did there. I love what he did with Mr. Immortal, how he would just be like the, the last ever person alive, no matter what happens. You know, he is Mr. Immortal. And just to play in all the other characters and I really fell in love with them. And it was... Uh, it was a shame because I think it had quite a little cult following going, but the sales kept dropping. Uh, I think the trade did very well, but um, it just, I guess, up, upper management just canned it because it wasn't hitting the numbers they wanted. But um, we were definitely having fun, and the next 
I kept uh, begging uh, the writers that go, and I kept being like, you know, Deadpool, he was uh, a great like Avengers, so we should really get him in there somehow. <laughs> and he was gonna, he was gonna be a huge part of the next arc. It was only going to be with Deadpool and the Great Lakes Avengers. They were going to team up again. He's going to join the team. And uh, sadly, as we were doing the issue of going into that, the book we got notified that the book was being cancelled. So we just had Deadpool come up. They just changed the dialogue at the end. At the end, he was supposed to be like, you know, I'm joining the team. But at the end, he was like, you guys are fired. So see ya. <laughs> yeah, that was so unfortunate because that's such a, a fun corner of the Marvel Universe that it comes and goes. And when it comes, I really enjoy it because I... I always know it's not going to last long because I'm in the minority of people who just love that part. Um, so thanks for bringing it back. I really appreciate that. But no worries. Oh, I, I, I kind of, even though I'm not a huge Deadpool fan, I kind of wish they gave that story a chance now because that might have gotten more people into it just because they would have been like, hey, Deadpool. <laughs> I, th I think um, a lot of things that didn't help that series was there wasn't enough uh, established star power, whether it was B characters or C characters, I think it needed like someone like I don't know, just I'm um, not specifically, but someone like Daredevil or, or even Luke Cage and I. It's just they just needed it needed something in there where it's like, hey, this is the Marvel universe. Don't forget that. I think it was trying to do too much of its own thing. But I don't, I don't have. I mean, I, I'm just you know a high gun. I'm just there to, to draw it. So I had fun anyway. Like I I chucked like pitch like because this was my this is my first proper gig at Marvel. Before that, I did some uh, interior on Star Lord, so I hadn't even like got to draw the the Marvel universe yet. So I was chomping at the bit to draw like the top tier characters. Mm -hmm. So in Great Lakes Avengers, like I put like posters of Captain America in the background, stuff like this, and that to me was just like, hey, look, remember this is in the Marvel universe. Look, there's a picture of Captain America. <laughs> so I did a, tried to do a bunch of stuff like that. So speaking of that, something I've always been interested in is. You know, we we all love books and we get into something and you'll see a run and then one issue, someone who's not the normal artist pops in. You said yourself you've done it a few times. How is that different from having your own kind of series that you're working on? Well, it's great to have your own series because that means that Marvel's putting everything behind you, which is one of fantastic feelings to be like, hey... You know, Marvel freaking comics is making you the number one guy in this book. That's excellent. But um, it's all deadlines. I mean, we had a filler in artist. Uh, I can't remember their name, but we had a filler in artist on Great Lakes Avengers for an issue, and it was basically going to be the setup was there was going to be one filler in issue for every trade paperback because I'm I'm not super fast. It takes me about seven weeks to get an issue done because I pencil and ink everything myself, so I'm doing two jobs. But um, yeah, I was a bit slow, but uh, it's great. I mean, filler in issues. They can be fun because you can hop in, draw some great characters you're not used to, and you can leave before you have to draw you know, the characters over and over and over again, which can get pretty frustrating, or just um, you get a bit lazy with it. Like, uh, I, I did some Secret Warriors stuff, and um, just uh, Spider-Man Deadpool, that was great to just hop in there and work on that book. And that's, that's fun, but at the same time, you feel like, oh, well, no one's going to remember, remember like me on this book. This is I'm just filling in a gap. When you're the number one artist, it's great because you're like, this is my book. This is uh, this is my legacy of, of my career. It's like it's when you are you know the number one artist. Yeah, and obviously that works because you jumped on my radar once uh, Great Lakes Avengers was gone. So you've also done tons of cover work. Yes, my curious. Curious nature about cover work is, how, like, first, how does that come about that you're offered a job for a cover, and then second, like, talk about the the kind of the, the artistic approach to cover work because I know it's different from doing interiors. Yeah, well, covers are the greatest thing in the business. I think that's what every you want to do. Like when you picture it being a kid, you're like, I want to be a comic book artist. I, and that to you is like, I'm going to draw this one picture of Spider-Man and then I'm done. I'm a comic artist. You know, being a comic artist is not that you have to draw people talking in coffee shops and, and people driving in cars and a bunch of stuff that you don't want to draw. Like when a writer says like, you know, oh, here's here's a wide shot of Amsterdam. And you're like, oh, God, I don't want to draw Amsterdam architecture. It's going to take me years. <laughs> but a cover is great because it's just like, hey, draw a cool picture of Spider-Man. Or like we have sometimes... Um, 
editors like we want you to do this sort of specific image but sometimes it's different but when i when i first did my portfolios review with marvel i said to them as i was going through the stages of of actually working for them i did mention like i can i have some cover prompts because i do want to really work on covers and they went yeah sure so they gave me a bunch of random covers to do um and this wasn't for anything that was going to be on the market this was still when i was trying out to break into the company so i made it from the beginning i made it very apparent like hey i want to be a cover artist because i think a lot of people don't they don't ask for stuff i think they sort of hope that someone will offer them like a captain america cover or something like that i i mean i'm sure editors hate me but i'm always emailing them like hey how's it going i, I would love to do a cover anytime that'd be great thank you <laughs> and sometimes it works out or sometimes obviously you get offered as well because I was doing, I mean, the great thing about, I think the covers came about because I was doing Red X Avengers, I was the main artist. And when you're the main artist, you have first dibs on covers. So they ask you, would you like to do the covers? And I said, yes, obviously. So I think as I was doing Great X Avengers covers, I think that sort of piqued interest of other editors being like, oh, this guy can do some cool covers. Maybe he'll want to do stuff over here. And um, yeah, I, I, my first variant was... Uh, on a Deadpool issue, and that was great fun because I love Deadpool. And um, sorry, I think people are yelling outside because there's football going on. <laughs> um, and uh, and then I did uh, Star Wars, which was I mean, Star Wars is my favorite thing in the world. So doing a that 40th anniversary cover was just uh, to me, it's still like the best thing I've ever done. Even though I had to draw the Millennium Falcon, it took me like 16 hours to draw the freaking spaceship in full detail to make Lucasfilm happy, but. Uh, yeah, it, it just snowballed from there. My covers, uh, I just I just wrapped up, I did a, it's crazy, I did 12 connecting covers for Big Trouble in Little China, which was an insane project that took over a year to do, but that, that was fun. But uh, that's, everything sort of slowed down now. I, I'm just working, I'm just focusing on Spawn right now. I want to get that book done, and I'm doing the covers for that as well, and the great thing is, as well is that Todd's going to be inking my covers, which is just mind-blowing to me, because... Like I said, I have Todd art all over my office, and the fact that this guy who I used to sleep on his art, like when I was a child, on my bed sheets, is now going to be inking me. It just makes me want to internally explode with happiness. But uh, yeah, it's just um, um, why well, I said I was saying um, yeah, Todd's Todd's going to be inking some of my pencils, which is nuts. It's like that's the most insane thing that I, I ever heard. So I can't wait. To see. I haven't seen any of it yet either. So I can't wait to see. Yeah, you know, my favorite artist ink over me, I'll just explode. Um, but then after that, um, I, I'm in talks to do some more stuff with Marvel because I'm coming to the end of Spawn. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to issue four. I'm really done with that run. So um, I don't know what will be for me next, but I hope to get back in the cover train because it's just fun. Like, covers are fun. You get paid more to do covers. You get to work with different editors. You get to enjoy the variety of of, of these fantastic characters that you've grown up with that you love um, and and yeah I, I, I would have very much like you see a lot of these artists you see someone like J. Scott Campbell or I mean mostly Jim Lee now like they mostly draw covers and a lot of people a lot of fans are like oh man I wish they did interiors because I love when they did this that and the other but I totally get where they are they're like look I, I was in the trenches I did because you know working in comics it's tough you have to hit all those deadlines they're like, I did my, my run of interiors. I've retired to covers because one, I'm going to make more money and two, this is way more fun. So more power to them. That's that's the direction I'd like to head in one day. Yeah, I, I understand that mentality because both him and uh, Joe Quesada on the other side, two of the, the best probably of all time. And yeah. I mean, they're at least in the top five. And just the fact that when we get a cover, I just freak out <laughs> I'm like, oh, these guys, they're still drawing. Like, I love that Jim Lee does that Twitch stream where he draws stuff and sells Yeah, I'm subscribed for... to that. Yeah. Uh, I wish Joe would do more, but I understand he's a busy, busy man, so. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never had any interaction with him, so. Yeah. Uh, so... I'm look, I, I'm, but he doesn't even know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you're uh, when you're on top of the pyramid, it's tough to know everybody. But so That's when you're true. when you're doing covers, like obviously you have direction to a certain extent. Like maybe this character has to be on it, so because he's going to be in this issue. But do you ever have uh, style notes to it? Like, do you ever have to 
to mimic the style of the book, or are they just kind of like, well, we want you, uh, we need these characters on here, and this and that, and do your thing? I think they hire you for your style. They want to see your interpretation of it. But that comes to a level of, well, they still have to be wearing the exact costume. Or they, yeah. still, have to, or they still have to, you know... In the sense of, I think there is a bit of there is a bit of liberty and freedom there. Um, it it depends. Um, I've never been asked to please draw like this artist. That's not really. I mean, if someone's, I mean, I've had that when I worked in the Indies, and that was awful. But um, not not any at professional level. And again, it's different. Some editors I've worked with, they're like, "Here's the idea I have for a cover. This is what I was thinking about." Um, and that happened with um, a lot of the Great Lakes Avengers covers to begin with. It was, we thought, like, there should be a guy in a scene and lots of chaos going on outside, but the Great Lakes Avengers had no idea because they're completely clueless and they're just eating, like, <laughs> burgers or whatever. So that was, like, the first cover. But as it went on, I got to, like, uh, I mean, to prove, like, even more that I'm a McFarlane nut, I think it's issue five, has a big Bertha, and she's, it's that classic McFarlane Hulk cover where she's ripping or Hulk's ripping... Yeah. Hulk in the brick and I and because they came we came to issue five and they're like um we don't really have anything would you like to do something I was like can I do a McFarlane O cover they're like yeah sure go on then I was like sweet <laughs> and uh and then there's other stuff like um the Star Wars it had to be the prompt was every artist that was working on the Star Wars cover they had to do a specific scene from A New Hope so I was given the reveal of the Millennium Falcon. I was like, I bet they gave that to me because they know how much I love Star Wars, but <laughs> nobody wanted to take that thing because no one wants to draw the Millennium freaking Falcon. So I bet they're like, oh, let the new guy take it. Like, he loves Star Wars. Let him prove himself there. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to spend 17 freaking hours on that Millennium Falcon. It's going to be amazing. But um, yeah, it's different. It, it changes with different covers. Uh, I did some Venom covers and they were more specific, but also... I also give prompts all the time uh, of like, here's what you wanted, and then here's three other options of other ideas. And sometimes they go, oh, oh I like that one. Let's do that. Or sometimes it's just completely open ended. When I got to do my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cover, they were like, just give us, you know, prompts of what you want to do. So I was like, here's them in the sewers in an action pose. Here's them looking badass on the rooftop. Here's them uh, uh, skateboarding. And here's them like having a pizza party, and they're like, "Pizza party it is." I was like, "Great, cool." So that's it, it's just it's just good fun there. I like that. That's awesome. So it sounds like you're having a lot of fun with those covers. So everybody, uh, Spawn kills everybody. When is that coming out? That's going to be, I believe, coming out in December. I, I recently had to do a cover, a Christmas theme cover. So it's all very vague. I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty mm. sure. It's coming out around December, it, whether it's early December, late December, or maybe January, I don't know. But I'm nearly done drawing the book, so it's it's up to uh, them to put it all together for the final product. So keep your eyes on the Image Comics section in your previous catalog, and I'm sure we'll hear more about it in the coming weeks with uh, San Diego Comic-Con coming up. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So... If my listeners and viewers want to find you, where's the best place to send them? Uh, I'm very active on Twitter, uh, at Robson Inc., and that's uh, R-O-B-S-O-N-I-N-K. Uh, that's my last name with ink, like an ink, ink <laughs> pen or whatever. Um, and that handle is, uh, is over all social media, at Robson Inc. everywhere. I also do my own podcast with my brother uh, called Spider-Man the Animated Series Podcast, and we just basically watch... Where we review old episodes of the 90s cartoon show. We also have guests on the show that have either worked in comics on Spider-Man or they they were voice actors on the show or writers. And, and it's just good fun. So that's available on, all, you know, iTunes and wherever. I don't know. My brother deals with all that stuff. I'm, I'm just like the co-host. I just talk. That sounds awesome. I'll be downloading that when we're done here. So <laughs> Listen. So yeah, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it, and uh, keep up the great work, man. I've been really I enjoyed Great Lakes Avengers. I can't say it enough. And uh, every time I see your name on a cover, it's always great to see too. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Wow, Will, so excited. Uh, I love the idea of somebody who's really into covers and wants to be a cover artist. And it was cool to talk to him about that. And 
what the difference between a cover artist is and doing interiors and all that. Like, such a cool corner of the comics universe that we haven't gotten yet. And, uh, yeah, it was really great talking to him. So thanks, Will, for being on the show. And check out his podcast. His podcast is really cool. Uh, him and his brother talking about uh, the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon. And uh, such a great concept. I, I always get jealous when I hear these great concepts. And I was like, why didn't I think of this? Um, but, yeah, so that was great. So, guys, everybody, thanks for listening. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at Fortress Chris. And you can find the show at FCN underscore official on Twitter as well as ForgeComicNews.com. You know the deal. If you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs up down below. If you're enjoying this podcast and the other shows we do on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. The bell button gives you notifications every time a new show goes up. So that's always a lot of fun. And comment. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know what you thought of the interviews of this and that. Any uh, things you want to talk about, talk down below. That's the best place to do it. But if you're listening to me, you're listening especially on itunes remember to go and give us a review on itunes it helps us get to more ears grow the show and do all that and you know share with some friends the more you share the more ears we get out to i remind you you know people i don't know and i want uh, i want more people involved in this community and uh so everybody thanks for listening and uh we'll see you next week